6 o'clock, call this meeting to order. Um, and I will do a roll call attendance here. Um, I am present, Maria Imp, Judy williams Kalaki. Present. Judy Miller. Present. Ravian Berrios. Present. Terry Barris. Here. Here. And Anne-Marie Vitas Aklopcia. Berrios. Present. Terry Barris. Here. Here. And Anne-Marie Vitas Aklopcia. Here. Alan Alexandrovich. Drovich. Got it. Here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mike Karalevich is not here yet. And I yeah. didn't hear. Uh, Alder yet. And I yeah. didn't hear. Uh, Alderman Jennifer. Kristen, okay. Alder woman Kristen Wilhelm. Here. Jennifer Lawful is also you. present. Um, there are no visitors and no public comment. Um, I don't really want to start. I don't really want to start the meeting without at least acknowledging, you know, the events of yesterday. And nothing I can say will be the right thing to say. Um, and I'm. You know, I have multiple connections out there, as I'm sure most of us do. And I just wanted to say that our work here in our community, and, um, and uh, so I just appreciate all of you and what we are doing for our community, because in times like this and events like this, I think our work is really important for keeping our community healthy and, and together and successful. For it. So thank you all for, for what you are definitely. All right, um, Jennifer did give me some sign. I'm not sure what that meant, but I'm just gonna continue on and if we need to backtrack, she'll have to let me know. Um, there okay. was a thank you note from the AMVETS Post 60 um, that is in our packet and that is from, I'm blanking out on his last name, Ed who has always been the AMVETS Post connection so he sent a very nice thank you for the Veterans Day program that was November 11 so that is in our packets um, and we will <laughs> move on uh, to be on October 25th I'll make a motion we approve the I'll second them okay um, Annie and Ravian seconded any comments? <laughs> Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Um, all right, Alan, finance committee, well not finance committee, treasurer's report. Okay. I uh, went over the invoices for fund 15 and but there's nothing uh, really out of, out of normal. Um, I looked at the AV upgrades, which is $9,325.59, and found that, uh, I was wondering why we were paying for it, because it's not done, and we're on a, a progress building. Okay. So, uh, then, is fund 15 where we paid the 975? No. Uh, Seven ninety five. Seven ninety five. That was out of sixteen. That was out of sixteen. Okay. Uh, we'll comment on that one. We'll wait till we get there. Um, I found something interesting. Like you have negative five dollars and sixty cents, and I was thinking, how are we going to pay a negative amount? But that's and I was thinking, how are we going to pay a negative amount? But as Jennifer explained, when we submit all these invoices, whatever the city has any invoices from any department, police, fire, whatever, they put it all together in one check. So that is just going to help reduce somebody else's payment, reduce somebody else's payment, or it'll ride on the books till we run something through Gale again. Mm -hmm. uh, the 758 was a front door repair. That was. Uh, I was surprised it was a professional safe and lock. I expected it to be somebody else, but. Well, and didn't we have, so that's gone. I have my keys. When the work was oh. done on the front door, our keys wouldn't open it because the new hardware didn't match up with the old. So he came and put an extender in so we can now use our keys on the front door. That, and that's what cost $758? Yep. Wow. 
So other than that, things look kind of normal. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the invoices for fund 15? For fund 15 for $30,132.20. All right, so, right. Any other discussion or questions for Alan or Jennifer? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Motion carries. Uh, fund 16? Fund 16. Um, I was talking about the $795. I, we had, did an advertisement. I read it on the invoice, but I don't remember. Southwest Chamber of Commerce? It's the South Suburban Chamber of Commerce. Suburban. Their um, business directory. This, hmm. is, this is the ad that we're running in there. Whatever. So it's nice. It makes more changes, but that's $795. And we do that every, every other, other year. Every yeah. other year, yeah. yeah. The Discovery World Library Pass, $750. Other than that, everything is, is pretty normal. The kind of things that we have every, every mm -hmm. month again. So I'd be looking for a month to approve $3,276.35. I so move. I will second. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Then we get to the financial statement. In Fund 15, there wasn't much that jumped out at me. Um, we're at 83.29% of the budget at this point. Expenditures are at 80.51%. Expenditures are at 80.51%. And uh, expenditures were greater than revenue by 104,000, 814.90. But that's expected because we get all of our revenue in 14.90. But that's expected because we get all of our revenue the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. We did get ten thousand dollars towards that landfill operations, the mm -hmm. city. Okay. And we're we lost money on, on our investments. And we're we lost money on, on our investments, which I didn't think was so great. Um, janitorial supplies, five yeah. Department five 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 six. Is that uh, um, something because of the cleaning? I thought we had to made an adjustment last year, but should we, you know, just it's make sure we're keeping track, track of that? This year. It's expected this year for 2023. Gotcha. Okay, what, what is corrected? She's saying in the 2022 budget, it I should added. be a more, she added some. Oh, okay. Just knowing that we're spending, you know, she's spending more. Yeah, and we were over by quite a bit this one month spending of twelve forty four. Um, this was like one of the cleanest financials. Everything kind of fell right in line. Fund sixteen total revenues are running ninety point five seven percent, and expenditures at seventy nine point two one percent of the budget, and we're eighty three point two nine percent. So fund 16 looks very good also. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see anything in 16 that jumped out at me. That looked unusual. So were there any questions? Way over 100%, mm -hmm. but they're the same ones that we've had in prior months. So not going to beat that there. Uh, let's see, the next cash register report. The first four accounts, financial statements, they're off. Um, some a little higher, some a little lower. And talk to Jennifer about it, and I'm going to ask her if she can run a detailed report for those four accounts. And I'll try and see why, because some of the differences, for example, count 75, 70, 
4765 mm -hmm. My dyslexia kicked in. Mm -hmm. This report has $919.09. The financials have 80211. That's a pretty big swing. <coughs> around $100. Bucks. So I'd kind of like to look into that and see why is things <coughs> around 100 bucks. So I'd kind of like to look into that and see why is that happening. Uh, because they post things in the city that we don't post or that we that we do post and they don't pick it up. Like for example, the 30th and the 31st of October were a Saturday and a Sunday and the city pick it up. Like for example, the 30th and the 31st of October were a Saturday and a Sunday and the city isn't open, we're doing right. business. Right. So we're gonna have those kinds of discrepancies. Sales tax is one of the discrepancies too. So I will dig a little deeper into that and see what I can find. Credit card summary, again, nothing was unusual. Mm -hmm. So the total there was 1,179.16. Ties back to what we approved. And then we get to the budget. Jennifer, were you going to? Yep, that? that's an under business. <laughs> okay. Yep. So that ends my report. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We're going to move right along to the agenda item seven, the business section of the meeting. Adoption of the mayor's recommended budget and Judy's. She has written the motion there. Well, I didn't for, write it. Somebody else did. That's what I said. <laughs> Jennifer has written the motion um, for adopting right. the two <laughs> sections of the budget. Okay. And um, were there? Um, were there? I think there's a lot of um, already, we have had a lot of um, discussion and ideas for next year's budget. I don't know that those discussions need to be held tonight because we just need to approve this budget. Discussions need to be held tonight because we just need to approve this budget. There was something that we were gonna look into to get clarification and that is okay. we're supposed to have 20 to 30% of right. our expenditures in the, in the fund balance and is that taking 15 and 16 and combining them? Did we get an answer on that? 15 and 16 and combining them? Did we get an answer on that check. yet? I didn't check, but that was my understanding, but I can. Okay. Okay. Because otherwise, if it's just 15, we're gonna go below 20%. Right. They're combining so both. That, okay, I kind of assumed that. Thank you. Okay, so we need to do these separately. Um, were there any questions about the final um, budget? And this was passed on November 19th, correct? Okay, so this is a done deal, you know. That's why I, I thought, you know, further discussion tonight may not be as productive as um, to plan for next year's budget. You know, that would be a good time. Um, any specific questions on what you see in front of you? Let's just look at um, Fund 15, first of all. Okay, then I would need a motion that the library board would move to adopt the library budget fund 15 with $1,413,325 of revenue, $1,379,000 of revenue, $1,379,399 of operating expenses and capital expenditures of $273,840. I just had a slight change. I think we should say whoever it is moves it. I don't know if it's you or whoever. Whoever it is moves it. I don't know if it's you or whoever. Move that the library board okay. adopt, not well, the library board will move. Gotcha. So. Go ahead. So I will, I will move that one. I will make that motion for Fund 15. Second. Alan seconds, team's number. Okay, all in favor of accepting that Mayo's recommended budget for Fund 15? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Uh, motion, any abstentions? Motion carries. All right, then if you could
You know, Jennifer, I apologize. There was that one item, and I think it was in Fund 15, where it was a set amount for Midforest, and that was changed by? It actually worked out. Because okay. Midforest actually is picking up more costs this gotcha. year. Gotcha. Okay. But they're okay. Any questions about the Fund 16 budget as uh, passed by the council? They didn't do anything with 16. Yeah. Okay, I noticed that. Motion? I make the motion. All right, as stated in the agenda. Um, second. And Alan seconds. Um, any further discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Um, motions. Motion carries. All right, moving on to 7C. Looking at the master calendar review and discussion, uh, this might take a couple minutes because there have been some changes. Um, the first change, just because there have been some changes, um, the first change, just because I'm involved in it, um, the city is moving to uh, do pay increases in January instead of May, June, July, whenever it used to go through. So we need to, um, May, June, July, whenever it used to go through. So we need to, um, for next year, move Jennifer's evaluation process back a few months um, in order to make sure it's done by December uh, since the, the raises go into effect January. Um, chance to look at it and have any suggestions, Radian or Judy? Two months prior. Okay, so then we're looking at um, September. Yes, uh, personnel committee meets in October. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, it's Judy. Yeah, it's we usually have to talk with uh, Jennifer. That usually doesn't happen until January now, but now we can do that way before then. Right. Are you, Mark? Are you? Jennifer's making up. So, um, so we will move the personnel committee meeting to August, and then up at the very top, the director evaluation. The first two items under January, we probably want to move to like November. Also, probably want to move to like November, also, or December. Is that what you were thinking, guys? Radio. Judy, and yeah, just move everything, shift everything yeah. two months. Mm -hmm. Everything for the personnel committee, move back two months. So, um, including then the director evaluation forms would be so, um, including then the director evaluation forms would be collected by the end of October so that we can. Um, right, right. Okay, so that. So the, they were like four items on that calendar. Okay. Um, um, I also talked to Jennifer about possibly um, adjusting the finance committee, just seeing how the wanted to move back a little bit, the August finance committee meeting, maybe moving that back to June or July. So I don't know if the finance committee has opinions about that or how they felt about the process this year and if that sounds like a good idea or if you have an opinion. <laughs> I think Jennifer has to submit the budget by the end of July. So if your first meeting in July um, or August is when the meeting set, I'm not sure that, that that's what we were thinking, that maybe meeting in, before she has to submit the recommended budget. So, okay, we have. Oh, pre budget planning in May. In May. Okay. And that and can stay. That can stay. Then do you feel like you need an, another meeting before you submit the budget? The budget. In May. In May. Oh, okay. The departmental request. So the pre, the pre budget planning would be. 
is some has something come up mm -hmm. from the city that requires the finance committee that might impact the library's budget? A few years ago, when there wasn't, when it looked like there was going to be some across the board department cuts, right. and they were already starting to sound their alarm. Okay. Earlier in the year. Okay. You know that kind of getting together and talking about what what can you do. So do you feel that could be what can you do? So do you feel that could be an optional meeting? The the August one or the June August, July or something the, the May. or May. Okay. And Jennifer, don't you find that the city kind of drives the budget process? Mm -hmm. I mean, they give you the labor, they tell you what a lot of the increases are, etc. I mean, they give you the labor, they tell you what a lot of the increases are, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, when, if they're driving that, when do you get that? And I know you, within your own departments here, you're gonna be requesting information from them. They ask, they have a time. Information from them. They ask, they have a timeline. Okay. And generally, July is kind of the month that we have to put our departmental request in. Okay. Um, but when you get all the things from the city, is that also in July? That's usually for the mayor's recommended Things from the city, is that also in July? That's usually for the mayor's recommended budget. It's like September or October. Yeah. The personnel request. Okay. Oftentimes, I don't see those until, you know, so the... The departmental request is just kind of like me estimating. Well, I guess then do you, oh, go ahead. I, I was just saying, just give you that place for them to start putting everything together. Mm -hmm. and then right. We start looking at everything and depending on the departments and then mm -hmm. come up with the way to recommend it. Based on. Well, I know one of the things that we had hoped was going to happen is that as a result of us doing station about what type of money the the library needs because of and where you you go try to go out a couple of years so that when they're doing planning for 23 you told them about it in 22 mm -hmm. right so I think our strategic plan what the city you know looks to do because otherwise we're not going to plan Right. Yeah. Right. And right. We, we haven't even started. We, we started talking about you know capital appropriations. You know, mm -hmm. the you know buildings and what are we going to be doing for uh, some vision, I think, and then those things usually end up costing money. Mm -hmm. You know, and so if we're going to be if we're going to be looking at our um, mid-year assessment in June on the strategic plan, that might be a good time to start talking about. In terms of our master calendar right now, um, does the finance committee need to be meeting in May and June or May and July, or do you feel like, um, you know, maybe meeting in May or June and doing a mid-year thing and also making sure that, sure that, you know, we're on track with budget requests and that kind of thing can happen at, at that one meeting? Do you still then, does the finance committee, what what was the August meeting, the purpose of that one? Because the budget, the purpose of that one. Because the budget was already, already submitted, the requested budget was already submitted. So what, what did that meeting tend to focus on? It's been a few years since I was on the finance committee. Well, that's where they would look at, that's when they would look the recommended budget. I That's when they would look at the mayor's recommended budget. The recommended budget. I th and that, I didn't think that came out though until September. Yeah, it might not. I mean, the okay. timeline has yeah, changed. Yeah, I know. Especially since time. Peggy. Okay. All right. Any feedback from you members on how often or what part of that process? From you members on how often or what part of that process you feel, you know, based on what has happened this year and last year, because I think Terry and Alan and Mike, you've been on that finance committee now for two years consistently. Do you feel like this timeline works? It, it works. The timeline works? It, it works. I, I don't know if it's optimal. 
I don't think that we ended up being in a bad position or anything no. ended up not happening as a result of the way it was done. Okay. It's but Mike brings up a real good point about the strategic planning and at what point are, will the strategic planning committee have something that needs to drive or be driven into the budget? Or are you years ahead so it's something that we need to talk about for a budget we're not talking about? So it might need to be more than just the plan was, but are there some things that we need to do as a strategic planning committee as part of the regular process, mm -hmm. just like you know, getting the budget in and doing all those types of things where, okay, not only where are we, but where, where are we going next year? Mm -hmm. what, what are the plans? What type not a regularly meeting committee, and but we also do have the January um, strategic plan retreat, which this could be a part of also. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have a conversation in January about how we want to move forward from a strategic planning standpoint. Plan. Yeah. All right. So do you want me to revoke so, the May? I was going to just ask, finance committee, should we keep the meetings as is? It doesn't mean you have necessarily have to have them. It's that we're touching base about you know. Yeah, sounds good. Um, anything else on here that needs to be adjusted or you felt like hasn't worked this year or the past couple years? Would, would it make sense to show the calendar, show the calendar for the net upcoming 12 months? I mean, we'd have to change it every one of these meetings, but Generally, and this is just how Jennifer and I have been doing it since I've been president, we review the master calendar when we do the agenda and then put those items, review the master calendar when we do the agenda and then put those items onto that month's agenda. Mm -hmm. If it's, you know, something that we need to, if it's just scheduling a meeting, we, you know, she takes care of that, but. Um, this would be like, now we'd be looking at December through oh, November, that way would be, that's what I was getting at. Like those November oh, out late would be good. That's what I was getting at. Like going out for to six months. Yeah, really I mean, since it, well, since there isn't it, anything that's going to change, right? So it's pretty much going to be a rolling calendar, right? Right. So if you, which we all have access to, so for November, right? Right. So if you, which we all have access to, so for November now you can look forward. To, yeah. You know, although we've kind of, you know. Thing that at this point we are making some minor changes, so the well, December right. the December thing we'll have to keep that in mind. We're just passing this along. To the December thing we'll have to keep that in mind. We're just passing this along. To the okay. And that was those were changes. I hate to say forced upon us, but you know that was outside of our control somewhat because the city changed their timeline. Sure. Okay. But maybe we can just be more conscientious about maybe doing a couple months in advance instead of just. One month at you know on our meeting. So. That's less work than what I was talking about. So <laughs> that's probably okay. <laughs> we'll start with that. If it doesn't work, we can always do more, right? <laughs> All right. Then I'm not sure with this master calendar. Not it's not a policy. Approve these. I think we just adjust it, and you have a new one for us next month. All right. Then we will move on to any other questions or comments about the calendar. Just want to make sure everybody's heard. Okay. We're going to move on to the center policy. It's pages 17 to 21 in your board packets, and it consists of the policy and then the agreements and waivers for the adults and minors, I believe. Yes. Um, and this is a fact when the Eagle Scout um, created the VR Center in the Create Space. So um, we're hoping that it's still good and up to date. Sam works. Sam looks at it. Does he? Okay. I I just have one one question, and then it's repeated um, in both of the waivers under notice. 
Um, Franklin Public Library strives to offer new and emerging technologies to support equitable access. And th those are the words, to support equitable access. And I'm wondering if that's necessary. Necessary, if it's a bit redundant, it's, you know, the library as part of who we are is automatically working to support equitable access to all of our materials. So do we actually need to state that or um, I obviously was state that or um, I obviously wasn't, you know, I assume you, Jennifer, looked at other libraries via our policies, if I'm remembering that timeline correctly. Like, at that time, there's only like one. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I guess I'm wondering, okay. Um, I guess I'm wondering if that wording is necessary, um, if it enhances the policy, what it's really getting at. Yeah. I agree with you. When I looked at that, I was like, what is that? I mean, I think you should just say Franklin Public Library strives to offer new emerging technologies. For our community that, members. Yeah, equitable access for community members. Yeah, I saw, I saw the same thing. Yeah. I, I think it just should, should just end with the emerging technologies. You should, yeah. It, Do we want to include for our community members or just uh, we strive to offer new and emerging technologies? Well, this, right. we're not. So we're, we're not. I mean, so for our community members, it really isn't. Right, old. even. Okay. Should we just, starting with two support to strike the rest of that sentence? I already did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I had one other question. Wait, does anybody have any other comments about that, though, that wording? Okay. Well, strive, strives, I suppose, is realistic, but it's always a thing of that it's not exactly a goal. Right. Yeah, so we're not guaranteeing it. We're striving to do it, but we're well, not guaranteeing it. Well, we strove, so. <laughs> we strove. And, and what was the objective of equitable access? We strove. And, and what was the objective of equitable access? It's not really what it's about. It's not really about equitable access for community members because that's how the VR is. It's just like a new technology we're offering, but it doesn't have really anything to do with like access to the library. Um, well, use like access to the library um, well technology is a certain type of access I think it would be more like access to that technology yeah for people in the community who may not be able to access it yeah, so well and I not be able to access it yeah, so well and I thought that too but I also felt like isn't that what we as a library do do so do yeah. we need to like state true. it in every policy that we're trying to make things accessible? That's true. You yeah. know, we're making we, we strive to make books accessible and uh, the That's true. You yeah. know, we're making we, we strive to make books accessible and uh, the the um, databases and you know, so I, I just thought it was a little bit redundant or a little bit Why don't you say you strive to offer new and emerging technologies to everyone? <laughs> What's this community members thing? Yeah, but actually, then when you read the policy, we're not offering it to everyone. We're saying people yeah. who've got certain conditions should be using it. Right. <laughs> That's what the whole agreement and waiver is about. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I guess, yeah, if you don't want to say we're striving, but. Yeah. About the equitable access? Oh, my third point, though. Yeah, the third page where we say, I understand that I'm waiving some rights. I had that circle. Oh, why do we have some? I, I, I should, should say I understand that I'm waiving rights that I would, may otherwise have. And some liability? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I agree with you. I don't know why. From some liability, it should be I have and then releasing Franklin Public Library from liability that it may otherwise have in the absence of this agreement. Yeah, this was language that came from Mark Liberta. Yeah. Um, we should not have some. Yeah, because then the question is, dangerous. what exactly are they waiving in terms of liability? What liability do we still have? I agree with that. I yeah. didn't notice that. Ran it at the time. We ran it by the city's insurer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think we run it by the city attorney. Today. I mean, it is. That's what they're doing. They're waiving rights by having some in there. The question's going to be. I mean, if I was an attorney, I came in and I was. Well, I'm an attorney, but if I came in and I was having somebody who had an injury, I'd be like, well, I only. Wait. I mean. 
that's my response. I don't know. It's on the second Trading one too. Yeah. What? It's, it's probably on, on both waivers, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. same with the equitable access. It's on all three. Um, you know, all three. Um, so strike some. Strike some and from both waiting. of the weights that I may otherwise have. The rights that are waiving are identified in the document. And then releasing Franklin Public Library from liability that it may otherwise have. So you have some choice in that bullet point. Mm -hmm. and, and then yeah. in both waivers, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my, just speaking of some, <laughs> this, is, this document in some form is required. Don't people just sign it? Right, in order for me to participate in agreement and waiver document in some form, I, I assume it's this form. Yeah. Not some form, yeah. this form. It should be, it, I think it should be, I understand, in order for me to participate in the virtual reality agreement and waiver release document. An agreement waiver document, uh, a signed agreement and waiver release document is required. They signed? Well, but isn't that like, they can't refuse to sign this. Right. If they and participant, like, they can't refuse to sign this. Right, if they and participate, to it, they so they have to. So, in order to participate, a signed agreement and waiver document is required, not in some form. Like, was is there an option? I mean, is there another option? Like, well, if you say signed, then more. Is there an option? I mean, is there another option? Like, well, if you say signed, then more they sign it works. Right. Right. So it ends up being electronic. Right. Okay. It, it's signed. Yes. So. Good catch on that one too. So just strike in some form. Yes. The say document is required. Well, assigned. Do we? I already put that in. Do okay. And so, do you want me to read it back? No, no. Okay. But it's you know obviously both waivers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have a training. And so on this first page of policy, just at a. Uh, agreement and waiver release of liability form signed in the presence of a librarian. So, and that's on the policy page. So, all right. Any other questions? So, have we in the past? We've had to move to update these, correct? With the changes made. Does somebody want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. All right, Annie moved to ex, uh, to moved to ex, uh, to uh, up, approve the form. Approve, revise to reapprove. No, it's not revised because we don't have one. No, you know what? This is a new one. We did one last no, month. Exactly we, uh, we did one last month. Where was I? No, it's October. This was approved October twenty-two. We did one last month. Where was I? No. It's actually, this was approved October 22, 2018. Three, eight, three years ago. Okay, in last month's meetings, I moved <laughs> to reapprove the mobile hotspot policy, but I, we didn't make any we changes. We didn't make any changes. It should be moved to revise. Judy, I don't think you've got any thoughts to remove. I would normally say move to revise. Normally say move to revise. But you're not making changes. No, we are making oh, changes. Yeah, revise. Yeah, move to revise. Yeah. I was going to say AB move to revise policy with discussed changes. Perfect. Do I have a second? Second. Mike seconded. Any other discussion or questions? Aye. Anybody opposed? All right. Motion carries. And you got all that, Jennifer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can always ask. All righty. The next um, agenda item eight is Kristen. Update us on past or upcoming council actions related to the library. All righty. Good. Of course, there is the um, parade that's going to come up in the next kind of next week, obviously. The whole Christmas thing. Yeah. yeah. Is that in conjunction with the budget with passing? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> with the sit, with the sit, not just here. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. I hope this year that'll be nice. There was some discussion of um, police chief you have about securing the road mm -hmm. because of what happened. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. I bet. 
Um, any questions for Kristen? Kristen about the city? Okay, and then agenda item nine, update on Franklin Public Schools matters related to the library. Dr. Newell? Yeah, there's no report this month, nothing okay. due. Excellent. All right, you're up next again for the Buildings and Grounds Committee. They gave us a wonderful spreadsheet here, oh, so. Okay. Um, Opportunity to do the walkthrough. Okay, um, so um, we had an opportunity to do the walkthrough in um, October. It was I think October was the end of uh, mm -hmm. when we did the walkthrough, and Annie and I were able to put that in our schedules. And um, what you'll see here are the things in gray in our schedules. And um, what you'll see here are the things in gray are carryovers from the last spreadsheet oh. that um, Jennifer and her team worked so hard to accomplish. So really very little is left from that first spreadsheet. And then everything else is something new that we identified or replaced or other, which would include decor. So you can take a look at that. Um, we did not identify a priority, we thought perhaps the board would like to take a look at some of these items and give us some input on what you feel might be um, important to accomplish here and where to kind of finalize this. I've got mine on my phone. I'm good. What was the past encounter? Is that that one? No, the other side. Yep. Annie has sharp eyes. Okay, I hate to add this. This is a great list. I hate to add this. That my, my girls walked up to the checkout counter. <laughs> and you, you know what I'm going to say? They like pull the board off. I know. Okay. Yeah, I've got to talk to Bob. They like pull the board off. I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've got to talk to Bob. Okay. It's been like that for. Yeah, yeah they just discovered it. Around, but yeah. So, so is that on the list, Jason? I'm gonna add it on there. Too. Okay, oh, she's gonna yeah. add it. She knows what I'm talking about. I don't even know what to call it, but you can put it on there. Yeah. Okay. The little edge of the checkout desk. What to call it, but you can put it on there. Yeah. Okay. The little edge of the checkout desk. So, yeah. Okay. So again, what were you what were you looking to the board? Just some feedback tonight on anything here that you see as a real high priority. Otherwise, Annie and I and Kristen can get together and with, without any input at all, I, I don't think that's necessarily appropriate, but if you, if you see something here that we should make a high priority, let us know. Well, I know that you guys are very in tune with like the wires in the kids area. That, that you know, we, we don't need it. <laughs> and I wouldn't have even noticed it if that little kid wouldn't have, I was standing there and a little kid came up and he grabbed them. And I was like, what are these doing here? Will the patio, that's not part of the, is that part of the mud jack? No, that's. That could a, be a separate, but I mean, much less expensive because just the patio just the area. Patio. And, and we do need to get a professional power washer out there because the one that we had was not okay. powerful enough to do the cleaning that it needs. My concern is is the tri any tripping hazards are always having elderly parents. Those scare me with always having elderly parents. Those scare me with with you know. How much do you have to pay someone to be a professional power washer? Well, Bob Tesh was going to talk with DPW. Yeah. Okay. Because you can buy a pretty powerful power. Yeah. Okay. Because. Well, I think what I meant is he Bob brought his from home. Oh yeah, right. And he took it out there, and he's doing this, and it's just leaving little white squiggle yes. lines. Well, he needs to put a different strip on it. <laughs> There's different. Strip. We need to borrow. Chris. Bob. There's just my son, so it's really good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think Bob was thinking that the DPW would have a have better it. one. I'm sure. Yeah. So okay. We I need to give him this list when we start that. Or we just use a fire truck. Okay, there we go, some training. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about buildings and grounds, 
down? Mm. Or is there any thought about doing anything that could be of an educational nature around there where you would have, you know, a different area for you to have? I mean, we used to have, used to have a wonderful environmental summer center by the middle school. And it would be nice to be able to then do nature programs around the because I think about the same thing about my school. We got tons of grass that all we do is mow it and it does, number one, nothing for the environment, number two, nothing from an educational standpoint. But if you had rain garden, prairie, I mean, you, you can, if we start to think about what could we do with, start to think about what could we do with the campus? Mm -hmm. From an educational standpoint, well, and I know the librarians might have some ideas. Well, and I know there are some gardens off the patio. Yeah. But is that are some gardens off the patio? Yeah. But is that kind of under programming? I mean, it was. I mean, yeah. And they got a grant, or they got some of those put in through that initiative. Yeah, that initiative. Yeah. yeah. The Victory Garden. Initiative. But yes. Yes. And then there's the rain garden that uh -huh. Carrie's done a lot of educational. It's something yeah. for the buildings and grounds to, to consider, you know, to think about. That's a good idea. Well, the parking lot and grounds is potential for a lot, a lot right. that could happen there. Right. <coughs> I, there's a, I, I'm assuming in the third <coughs> or fourth line, sorry. sorry. Oh, it sounds like. We're lining them up with the community. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this cold out is probably nice and warm right there. So they oh, yeah, I bet. They're all little starlings, and they all eventually make their way into the library. <laughs> <laughs> what jumped out to you guys? I mean, obviously, everything on the list jumped out to you, yeah, but do you feel like there was... Um, so the wallpaper around here is pretty bad in a lot of different places. It's splitting and the seams and everything. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree with, we have to take care of safety concerns first. Anything that would right. be a safety hazard <coughs> has to come first. first. Anything that would right. be a safety hazard <coughs> has to come first. Wallpaper and the carpet in the um, meeting, those little study rooms is gross. Is that because people spill stuff in there and don't tell you so you don't get to clean it up and then it's just, yeah. yeah. It's the carpet. So you don't get to clean it up, and then it's just yeah. Let's just get rid of the carpet. Why is it? I, we can't, right? Carpet's disgusting. Well, in general. well, I could get rid of the carpet. There's concrete underneath, yeah. so we'd have to replace it with something. There you go. Stain flooring, it. hard flooring, maybe. Because those are stain it. concrete floors are cool when it's in. The other bigger item. I don't know if you noticed it, but the pillars outside the building are starting to look pretty bad, yeah. and that is a distinctive feature. They're almost rusting or something. They do not look It's good. the facade on the outside. I mean, inside it's the whatever. Support CL, beam. F bob. What it would take to fix those up. Storm. That I just th that is such a distinctive feature of the building. What are they like? Stucco around steel beam? Something like that. It's some kind of yeah. veneer. And there's a lot of spider cracks. Mm -hmm. You know. Sounds like it's a plaster feature. Or something. Right. Choice like Corinthian or Doric columns. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, you know? Yeah. Like ribbing in there. You want me to change the architecture on that? <laughs> well, <laughs> make your mark, Jennifer. Yeah. I don't it know sounds if those like a foundation <laughs> issue, doesn't it? <laughs> or we can start using it as a kiosk. Or <laughs> issue, doesn't it? <laughs> or we can start using it as a kiosk where people can go ahead and like on college campuses, you go ahead and plaster your notice for whatever, and then you cover all that up. There we go. <laughs> right? Well, actually, the other thing was that yeah. you couldn't um, you couldn't hang. There's no provision like hang. You couldn't hang. There's no provision like hang right. like vertical banners right. or, or horizontal, or I guess I don't know, but you know, um, some of that kind of right. Thing. Yeah, you're if, right. If they had to be redone, maybe there'd be some potential for. Well, for some other for some other features, yeah. right? Years ago, they did put those big banners, and they were for features, yeah. right? Years ago, they did put those big banners, and they were fundraising for the cultural center. Okay. They look kind of cool, actually. They made it look kind of like a museum. Center. Right, yeah, right, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that actually would be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jennifer, are there things on this list that you hear patrons? Are there things 
on this list that you hear patrons mentioning? Because that would be another thing that if we get a lot of com complaints or comments from the patrons on certain things, we may want to I feel like patrons don't really notice a lot of the little, sure. this a lot of the little sure. things. Sure. I mean, okay. probably the carpet would come to mind and the, I kind of the computers okay. are pretty rough. Um, okay. Other than that, most okay, people are just Okay, you're not getting like, complaints no. about certain things. Okay, all right. Is it that you notice the thing about the one of the pass-through rules? Is the idea you didn't wipe with the mica? Well, it's all just chipped and loose. <coughs> Did you see? Well, it's I saw the cracking on the side because the thing is dropped. Yeah. So if it was chin back up and then caught. Mm -hmm. it, what are you doing tomorrow, Kristen? Well, she's power washing. She's power washing. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Next day. <laughs> so and you can see that the, the cracking is not even a, right the attached. The powder is because it's, it's probably subtle. Yeah. From weight. So Jennifer, does this automatically become then um, a, a part drop then into the, your um, annual plan with the strategic plan items? No, I can't remember how this. Do, it's kind of it's a, separate a separate document. Thing. Okay, all right. Because I just hand it to Bob. Gotcha. And say do these. Okay. I mean, obviously we had numbers and priorities. Made it his life's mission to <laughs> to finish the <laughs> list. <laughs> Okay. He took it. So, um, okay. So, who puts dollars against all these things? Well, I think a, is a lot of it can be done yeah. by city maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Columns might have to move to a capital list because that could cost you yeah. a lot. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But most of these things are not things to carpet. Or know, flooring changes, yeah. Into, if we get that out of our budget. <coughs> Carpeting is in on the capital improvement plan and the capital improvement plan. Okay. Capital improvement plan and the capital improvement plan. Okay. Does Bob have the equipment like a, a somewhat decent carpet cleaner so that every? We have an extractor. I wouldn't say it's decent. Okay. Has how often is that used? Those little rooms are beyond that. Well, yeah. how often is that used? Those little rooms are beyond that. Well, yeah, I, I know. Say that's gross. Okay. All right. And to Kristen's point, um, it does become kind of a health concern when you have you're in a small room breathing a dirty carpet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was vital point though. It right. Was right. Budget item that would have to be a budgeted. Quotes and bids. And mm -hmm. Vital is a concrete, it's a really good solution. You don't have that moisture in there. Right, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, on this, can you put the pass through and send these replacements and just put these repairs? Because there's a huge. Would it make sense to, or is it just too uh, not, not significant enough, but to say, say building and grounds instead of building, and maybe say building and grounds instead of building, and maybe say maintenance and cleaning, <coughs> if, you know, okay. just a priority of it, that maintenance, maintenance is more, maintenance is a bigger category or a, a higher price <coughs> items probably than cleaning. Okay. Are you asking to kind of break up the list into capital projects? No, no, but just in, on the title. Okay. Building, that gets cleaning. building and grounds, maintenance and cleaning. Oh, okay. What do you want, Bob? What? Maybe call it. Honey do. <laughs> Franklin Public Library, actually. Honeys do. <laughs> Franklin Public Library, building and grounds, maintenance and cleaning list. We should change into words. Hmm? It's probably an acronym in there somewhere. Are we really responsible? Yeah. It, 
the city. It's what? It's the city that does it. Yeah, yeah so yeah. The, the grounds aren't our responsibility. No, but to Mike's point, if we enhance the grounds for use for programming and yeah. education. I, I don't disagree. Yeah. But if right. Well, if we're we, we should make sure that the city has no problems with that. Because right now they're maintaining it. They they might think we're responsible for the building. Right. And they're responsible for well, that's a good thing I can feel it. Yeah, I know. Well, well I, it, but even right though, they're, they're, I'm sure Yeah, I know. Well, if well I, it, it, but even right though, they're, they're, I'm sure you know, they're, they're not going to go through and say, okay, where would you like to have Kristen's fruit tree? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know but, they're not going to. So, yeah, so if, if there's ideas of what we'd like to do with, with the property, yeah, we would definitely want to. If there's ideas of what we'd like to do with, with the property, yeah, we would definitely want to talk to the city about it, but I, I think it makes sense yeah. to make use of all of that outdoor space as well. Even yeah. in the wintertime, there can be opportunities yeah. for that. And the parking lots might be something that the city would handle, would be most concerned that it gets done or that it's noticed in the first instance. And the same with, and actually the same with all the grounds. It's like, yeah, maybe it, it might be that the city is going to say yes or no on what we suggest, but you know, we'd be the ones that are most concerned about it. Why wouldn't we just call it what it is, which is it's a building, this is what we've identified. We're not saying it's comprehensive. We're not saying it identifies every single thing. It's just what we've identified in a walkthrough of the building. I mean, there, a maintenance list that that, that could be huge. I just I don't necessarily disagree with Terry. I mean, you, you have a you're sort of saying that we've identified here it is and it's comprehensive. What we've done is a walkthrough of the building, and I'm sure you guys did a comprehensive review. But at least then we're not representing that it's something that it's not. Did you guys walk through the staff areas as well? Or do you rely on the staff to identify, because I'm sure they could probably rely on the I didn't. staff to identify, because I'm sure they could probably identify some things too that are part of the building. Mm -hmm. That I would think should be included on these lists since we especially if are the involves. board of the library, not just you know, including well, especially the if it involves, board of the library, not just, you know, including Well, especially the, if it involves workflow. Exactly, right. Or if there's disgusting carpet where our staff are working and, you know, we, we should mm -hmm. also, yeah. Do you have a, That's a bad idea subcommittee on your staff that does stuff like that? I just... You do, okay. Okay, you know, the faucet okay. needs to be replaced, you replaced it. Okay. Dishwasher need to be replaced, we replaced okay. it. Countertop really needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about relocating, having everything more centrally located in the planning yeah. right. part of it. And I just want to make sure the back deck areas that the staff are always in are also being paid attention to and not just our public areas. Mm -hmm. so. This is a very nice list, you guys, and it's you know, it's just like a working document. Exactly. Like Judy's point, it's the working stuff on the list that got off the list. Right. And then the last list made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did a great job with that list. I mean, yeah. there was not much left. There's still a lot, but I mean, yeah. the bathrooms are so much better than they yeah. were from the first one. Other questions for our Buildings and Grounds Committee? Nice job. Good job. Good job. All right. Um, oh, report of the president. Um, I didn't really have anything to say until Jennifer handed me this today. So this um, Frank looks like we need to read, sign, date, and return to the Department of Administration as soon as possible. And I'm wondering if, um, so on the last page, I think we sign it. Are we allowed to sign it now and hand them to you? If you sign it now and hand them to you, if you feel if we if if you don't want to read it, um, I think I need to page through it. Can we fax them? And then my second question is, if we oh no, it's only when we redo our term. Do we just have to do this once during our three-year term? It's only when we redo 
our term. Do we just have to do this once during our three-year term, or is this every year, or just once forever? Well, the change is you would sign the loan, but it's not expected. Okay, so it's kind of a one-time reaffirmation or re-sign. Okay. Well, just make sure you do it. How about? Okay. Well, just make sure you do it. How about that? I guess. So I don't. I, I was not planning on having us review it tonight at all. But just don't forget to do it. Otherwise, I'm sure. It's not on the agenda. No, it's not. It's just part of my part of my report. Just to remind us to do it. <laughs> Ian. Can you guys hear me? Or I need to take this off. I can hear you. I know. I like <laughs> it. might be my, more my problem than yours. So I'll, just I'll, I'll try to talk towards yeah, you. Yeah, no. Hopefully that makes it louder. Okay, so we met um, a couple weeks ago and we reviewed the um, evaluation. And so you all should have gotten an email on the 12th. And we've had three responses from the staff and from the board. So the board's doing better. There's well, less of us. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> so if you didn't get it, please do that. Um, otherwise, that's been around forever you know but this is really the first time she's brought it up oh, okay. yeah so I just yeah so there may be some changes to staff members too yeah. yeah but I think it's still I think we you know came to the conclusion that it was still valuable to yeah. have all the staff yeah. give that feedback yeah mm -hmm. Email and so you're able to view that mm -hmm. evaluation because I know there were issues last year with it going to some wrong email or spam. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just make it, and I think we fixed that. But, but I still just you know need to make sure that we're everybody got it. Okay. No, it's just it's just got to get out of it. I'm not one of the three that have done it yet, so I've got it. <laughs> All right, anyone else having issues with that? No, it's they've got this new security system. Uh, and half of the people's emails go into this silly box. Okay. You can flip that link to another email. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's what happened with that. Um, sorry. No. Well, it'll probably be a good idea for everybody to make sure they can. Right. You did get it. And contact yeah. radio. Yeah, because I can resend it. Yeah. So basically that's what happened, yeah, because I can resend it. Yeah. So basically that's what happened. Ooh. And then, um, Maria, you brought up the, um, the timeline change, but we already talked about that. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. And then on the 13th of December is when we'll meet again to review all the forms and bring that feedback to you guys again. Review all the forms and bring that feedback to you guys again. That's it. All right. So I, I believe then we are planning for December to go into closed session just to mm -hmm. get the feedback from the personnel committee mm -hmm. and all that. The feedback from the personnel committee mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, then agenda item 13, Jennifer, your director report. Um, well, you saw my good news about the librarian. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you saw my good news about the librarian. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really great. Stuff. That is yeah. awesome. Um, and the sprinkler system, the compressor, Bob reported today that the new compressor will be installed on Monday. You know, it did what it was supposed to do, so it failed. You know, it did what it was supposed to do, so it failed, and it did what it was supposed to do. It was just, yeah. Was the library open when it happened? Mm -hmm. Or it was on a Sunday. It was on Saturday. A Saturday. So either it wasn't quite open or it just opened. Oh, okay. Yeah. It helps to have a fire department right across the street. Um, they heard it mm -hmm. and just came over. That's awesome. <laughs> and my question to them was, is it safe? I mean, are, is, yeah. it, is it safe for patrons to be in the building? He said, oh yeah, it's, you know, as long as you get it fixed today. Get the company in to, fix, to get the temporary compressor on. Um, the boilers, you can see we have issues, but they're old. Uh -huh. um, ABI is still waiting on that one component. And the 2022 budget was passed. Budget was passed on Tuesday, last Tuesday evening. Um, Carrie and I did some modifications to the magazine subscriptions and saved over a thousand dollars. We're kind of proud of us. That's great. Um, we're getting an explore pass. We looked into the explore pass and lock public museum, but let me just. Um, we're getting an explore pass. We looked into the explore pass and lock public museum, but let me just tell you, it would have been way too expensive. So, um, ironically, after I got the email from MPM basically telling me what the cost would be, and I was like, no, nope, that's not happening. I got an email from Discovery World because I, I got an email from Discovery World because I contacted them hmm. last spring about doing an Explore Pass with them. Hmm. And at that time, they didn't do it, but they love the idea so much. And went back to their board of directors. Oh. And they're only offering this program cool. to a select few libraries. Oh, way to go, Jennifer. I know. So, I see it's different. A little more restrictive. Right? It is going to be a little more restrictive. So, there's going to be a little bit more. But I think for folks that don't really haven't had experience with Discovery World as opposed to museums, yeah. I, I think it's a great opportunity for them to, like, okay, here you go. Here's a pass. Try it out for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I assume one person can use it per year. I, I assume you mean that In a you can only use it once a year. Okay, like if I like you, can like I could it. use it to tomorrow, mm -hmm. but then I can't check it out next week and the week after. That's right. And the week after, no, mm -hmm. it's like I get it once yeah. Yeah. this whole year. Yeah. This whole year. So we are going to have to keep some kind of Google and spreadsheet or something. Yeah, so that we can sure. Keep track of that. Um, I ran it by Carrie. I'm like, you know, what do you think? And she emailed me back because she was really excited about. It. She goes, I think we could do it. You know, yeah. we're just going to have to. Figure it out. Figure yeah. it out. Librarians will be more heavily involved. To figure it out. Figure yeah. it out. Librarians will be more heavily involved in it. Um, and then we're pretty much done with the shelving, but you might notice that there's a lot of shelving <laughs> propped up along the wall, which I need to talk to Bob about. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not the sorry. Yeah. It's, it's not the sorry. optimal thing, but they need to make room in the storage room fit it all because yeah. we had a lot. Fortunately, we used two of them over in adult fiction or there would have been more. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that's done. We moved the pod back there. Um, and then, so then all of the old chairs came out and we did sit, we sat in all of them and some of them you just sink right down in and they went bye bye. And the rest of them will be used. So we're just going to go through and pull out the best. Mm -hmm put around the library. Um, really clean and tidy. I'm mm -hmm. happy with it. Mm -hmm. Except for the show. <laughs> um, Sarah and Brittany are starting to get more and more numbers in their story time. Mm -hmm. So they've been pretty much kind of taking over the Phaedro room. Mm -hmm. Pretty much Monday, Tuesday, when people can spread out and keep things as safe as possible. Um, we're I'm actually going to the Franklin Environmental Commission meeting on December 8th. 
talk about a partnership with the Holiday Light Recycling because it's in Sussex, um, and we're hoping that we can partner with them and have more volunteers to help us with it. So they're very interested. So hopefully we'll have a partnership. And then upcoming events, November 23rd, Wednesday is our la is your last day to order Stone Creek Coffee Dinosaurs program. December 4th, we're having a Foundation Holiday Bake Sale and the Franklin Christmas and Parade, Entry Lighting. And if we're still looking for bakers. <laughs> and December 11th, there's a kids program. And December 11th, there's a kids program, Candyland Quest, and then Great Decisions, I'm working on. Just, going on. Yeah, and just a comment about that December 4th thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's the library, the city, and the Historical Society mm -hmm. will all have events going on. The Historical Society mm -hmm. will all have events going on it's that day. day. So it's going to be all kinds of stuff right in this area, and it should be pretty happening. Mm -hmm. so. The Santa program here is already full. Mm -hmm. so and that's on that day, too. It's on that day. Yeah. We have a hundred mm -hmm. and that's on that day too. It's on that day. Yeah. We have 183 kids signed wow. up. That was the limit, 183. The limit, no, the limit was <laughs> we had a half. Has you come to that number? <laughs> we had it broken down by half hours. Oh, okay. so, uh, we had it broken down by half hours. Oh, okay. So and we're gonna have to be very quick. Because kids are only going to have two minutes of Santa. Whoa. So. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be over there going, okay, okay. Christmas story. It's going to be like a well, Christmas really story. <laughs> but we think what we're going to do is a lottery. It's going to be like a well, Christmas really story. <laughs> but we think what we're going to do is a lottery. We're going to hand out numbers when people walk in the door. And they get, when they call their number, they got two minutes with Santa. <laughs> it's a two-minute warning. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's the only thing. Are you gonna have music? So all of the stations have like one person, you know, one volunteer helping here, one volunteer. Santa, we got three. <laughs> the station <laughs> before you get to Santa is you have to write down your list so you can just read it to him. Yeah. In well, under we do two have minutes. the letters to Santa yeah. station. <laughs> yeah. So. Do we have to discover? Are you going out? Yeah. No, but we parted with the 750 bucks and we talked about it, but, but I didn't hear anybody say, yeah, we got it. Or no, it's going to no. arrive in They'll, two weeks. Or as soon as they get the check, we'll get the pass. <laughs> Will it still be in 2021? I hope. Okay, okay good. Mm -hmm. How much it would be used? Maybe it would. I mean, when school's out, maybe yeah. it would yeah. during Christmas and New mm -hmm. Year's. But prior to Christmas, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Anything jump out on at a glance? Is it pretty consistent? Yeah. Or from the foundation or Jennifer? Bake sale. Bake sale. <laughs> bake, 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 bake. If you're able. Um, our next meeting's in January. Okay. All right. So we're doing the bake sale on the same day as Santa. That's going to be crowded. Bake sale in here and Santa outside, or? It's going to be in here. Okay. And the bake sale's going to be in the corner of the lobby. Okay. Because I want to capture everybody who's walking mm -hmm. in and out. Okay. Coming in to use the bathrooms that are outside. Mm -hmm. All right. Terry, what's going on with colon? Well, other. Terry, what's going on with colon? Well, other team business probably isn't that much concern, but we did have uh, a virtual library tour. The library tours are sort of a bit regular part of our meetings. And this one was of, don't know if I use, and this one was of, I don't know if I have that terminology right, but the uh, Nakuda Ray Indian Nation uh, Library up in the Green Bay, um, which is, <laughs> Tribe or the nation owns and operates it, but it's part of the regular library system there, uh, like we are here over here for us. Um, and they, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how uh, the particular library does things. 
But the thing that was, I'd never heard anything quite like this before, and that's what I kind of looked for. They found some reason that um, children at the library, some program, uh, that what they would wind up doing as part of the project is they'd bring down a ceiling tile and have these ready for the kids, and they would decorate a ceiling tile and then replace it up yeah. in, the roof, in the ceiling. I like that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an, it's an art project, and a lot of times I suppose you, you know, the kids will do some kind of art and say, well, now we can't, you know, have an art gallery and that sort of thing. And so mm. they, they have that ceiling. It's their own. Ah, that's cool. Right. Not the Sistine Chapel, <laughs> but it, right. it, it was nice. That's mm -hmm. cool. Right. It, it, it was nice. That's mm -hmm. cool. So that, I guess I say, the rest of the things that are going on are more or less routine. Uh, there was, this was not something that I saw from the meeting, but. Um, there's a blog at, I think it's the Department of Public Instruction, a blog at, I think it's the Department of Public Instruction on libraries and one of our staff, yeah. you and other people and one of our staff people here were involved in some um, program there and I didn't bring, I, didn't bring <laughs> I left my paperwork at home, but if you do, can you give it some? It was the thing I passed on that was down to the library. You do, can you give it, it was the thing I passed on that was down to the library to inform the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we worked with the Franklin um, Couple of music, yeah. music in the park, mm -hmm. concerts in the park, mm -hmm. to bring in, they wanted to bring in younger, right, more crowds. Yeah. Right. More crowds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and increase their numbers because mm -hmm. they were super mm -hmm. happy with the numbers they were getting. So by that working together, the attendance on oh, like it was more than doubled. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, there'd be an a Cool. Yeah, there'd be an a blog that's at the DPI website. Uh, you know, a lot of people in the library community all over the state would have uh, would have seen that when it was posted. Mm -hmm. Caught me by surprise. You hadn't mentioned that. Like, well, you probably didn't know that it was going to be posted on the. Blog. I did not know it was going to be. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, so our upcoming meetings, the Personnel Committee is meeting December 13th, as Radian said, at 5 p.m. Um, and then our next Library Board of Trustees meeting is Monday, December 27th at 6 p.m. You know ahead of time that that's not going to work for them? Yeah. Radian, you will be? I know my sister will be in town. Um, Probably, but I, you know, I should be able to be here. What if, what about I, if, if there were more than just one not going to be able to be here, then I would have, you know, suggested that. But if Radian right now is the only one and the rest of us are planning on being there. So I don't want to be in Wisconsin during the summer. <laughs> so you won't be up by your sons over okay. that? Okay. It does kind of bring up a good point, like if the weather is really inclement, can we meet virtually? You know, we had this discussion as COVID was coming to um, a, a point where we were starting to meet back in person. What, what, what constitutes so has something written that you have to be in person, but we don't have anything like that. So, you know, if Alan is up in Door County even, but doesn't mind logging onto his computer and taking an hour, hour and a half to meet, an hour, hour and a half to meet, is that okay? And obviously weather, yeah. Um, I didn't see anything in our bylaws that we have to meet in person. If it's day and by one or two o'clock it's snowing pretty good exactly you could just say let's just meet virtually tonight because it's coming down pretty heavy the, the isn't there a public call? notice issue yeah. i was going to say the, the concern is always open meeting open meeting and somehow we have to there always has to be someone at the place where you can open the meeting okay there we go um <laughs> bring your sleeping bag 
it. I would probably be here anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I'm always more bossy. But could you yeah. imagine? Because it was so bad. Like, all of you live in Franklin. I live in Waterford. Right. So yeah. it's a real big hike for me to right. go home at 8 o'clock at night after it dumps snow. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's just something like to consider. Like, our school board, you can. And how? Right. Okay. Wouldn't that be okay as long as there's one person here? Well, that's true. Right. And the way we do our personnel committee meetings, if we're all on Zoom, a librarian here has a laptop set up in a conference room, and if anybody wants to join our meeting, if anybody wants to join our meeting, you know they have the link and can do it that way too. Um, I, think, I, I think it would be fine. But there's nothing written that says we have to be in person. So definitely consider that. And um, I don't definitely consider that. And um, I don't I don't know if it could be just as easy as calling and being on somebody's speakerphone or if it has to be through the library or, or what that would have to be what that would have to look like. But maybe we could um, When, how, how far in advance do we notice the meetings? Or do we have to be noticed the meetings? 24 hours. Well, I think it's a business day. So like, so like you would have, have to do it Friday I for a Monday have, meeting. So like you would have, have to do it Friday I for a Monday have, meeting. Right. Well, let's say for example, this was a snow meeting and Judy didn't want to come. Right. I didn't bring my computer, but I don't have to see her face. Right, right, that's where just yeah. calling in to hear and yeah. have to be able to contribute. Right. Right. Calling in to hear and yeah. have to be able to contribute. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think we can make it fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does the library have a Zoom uh, mm -hmm. account? I don't know what that's called. You guys we, have we, a. We used to have two. Okay. But then once we started meeting back and forth in the room, it's being added to Brown as a night reader and not uh. as a Zoom. Because yeah. the other thought is, I mean, if we know there's inclement weather and wanted to post a Zoom option, you know, like if there's a big snowstorm predicted, when you notice the meeting, could you notice it as like what we do where? I could still do the same thing with the. Yeah. Yeah. You might just miss some. Maybe a feedback from uh, some city. City. <laughs> Oh well. How often is it we'll going to happen though? Time. On the other hand, if you just call in and listen. Bad weather, cancel for everyone's sake. You know? I agree. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Postpone it. Yeah. But we talked about that even if someone is, you know, too ill to maybe come here in person. Or but if you're quarantined. Uh, with your, there we go. Exactly. You know. Just that one circumstance. It, it could be an option for multiple. Circumstances. Do you want to pass some kind of a policy? Not today. No, not tonight. Not today. No, <laughs> Seven thirty was like my limit. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion we adjourn. I second. <laughs> okay, Annie and Mike, all in favor? Aye.